Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I want to thank all my subscribers this morning after uh, this morning's video. More of you guys are subscribed to the channel. We're trying to reach 100,000 and we're at the end of the month today, February the 29th. We squeezed in an extra day there, but we've got one month to get to 100,000 subscribers. And guys, I'm going to be giving away two Ledger Nanos, a Ledger Nano X and a Ledger Nano S worth $149 and $79 respectively. So I'm just going to be giving them away to two lucky subscribers, but you do have to be subscribed by March the 31st. Conversely, I, uh, I know in this morning's video, I talked about Coinbase and how uh, people were panicking seeing a zero balance in their Coinbase account. If you want to keep your cryptocurrency safe and you want a Ledger Nano anyway, I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video. Uh, and you can use it if you want. You don't have to use it. I just uh, put it there for ease of use for those of you guys who do want to purchase a Ledger Nano to keep your cryptocurrency safe because hackers, glitches, whatever it is, everybody wants to get their grubby little mitts on your hard-earned cryptocurrency. So in order to keep it safe, keep it in cold storage. And uh, there are other options too, not just the Ledger option, but uh, this is what I'm giving away guys to two lucky subscribers. So please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. XRP, let's go. This one from DJ Peter Vass. And guys, check this out. Google searches for Ripple are up 43% in the last week. Okay. And these are the worldwide statistics here. So Google searches for Ripple are up 43% in the last week. Of course, uh, we have seen a bit of excitement here for XRP. We did uh, go up to 60 cents uh, overnight during the overnight hours. And now we're back uh, down in around 59 and a half cents as of the time of this recording. I mean, it's looking pretty good overall on the chart. The structure is still uh, set up for a nice pump. One of the few coins that uh, I still do think if you have not packed your bags, uh, one of the few coins, in my opinion, that is a good buy if you feel like you've already stocked up enough on XRP and are looking for some other picks that have not rallied yet. I do offer a Patreon yesterday. I did just do the $10,000 plus roundup where I show you guys my portfolio and show you guys where my altcoins are at today or rather yesterday. I did it yesterday, but uh, it's a fresh roundup. So for those of you guys interested, it is only $5 a month, patreon.com slash working money channel. Uh, you know, we're seeing extreme greed. So we're going to see these altcoins really start to pop very, very soon. Bitcoin is flirting with a new all-time high. And as liquidity floods through the market, we're going to see more demand, hopefully by the end of this bull run for more real world utility cryptocurrencies. Cypress Domenicor here bringing this up, okay? Digital Euro Conference 2024, that is happening today, February the 29th in Frankfurt, Germany. Zero mainstream media attention, he says here. Yet some of the largest organizations and financial institutions in the world are attending. We got Ripple and the Casper Networks, uh, just to name a few. And not only that, guys, Ripple Partners, MasterCard, SAP, DZ Bank is another one. Uh, there were some rumors that Goldman Sachs is using Ripple, Unicredit. Uh, the BIS is obviously uh, very cozy with Ripple. The Hyperledger Foundation is in there too. So some heavy hitters in the space uh, all attending today's conference. On top of which, we've got Ripple partner Rabobank. They've just conducted a 2 billion euro of DLT pilots for commercial paper. So Rabobank, which again is a Ripple partner, confirm Ripple partner, they've completed a series of pilots executing more than $2 billion or 2 billion euros, excuse me, in commercial paper transactions. These pre-production transactions were executed by the Uber Morgan insurance platform, which leverages blockchain. A third participant, uh, third participant is Treasury Spring, which helps make commercial paper insurance available to investors. Global asset managers were also in involved in the trials. This is the latest demonstration of the advantages of DLT technology for intraday transactions and settlement efficiency. Typically it takes two days to settle. So that has been, uh, you know, kind of the norm, kind of the standard there when Swift uh, dominated the space. But now because of DLT technology, a lot of these banks are realizing, no, we can do better than this. And, uh, you know, with these partnerships, like the partnership with Ripple running on RippleNet, uh, they're seeing those times really decrease. Uber Morgan supports T0 settlements, and it's possible to agree on a specific time window for settlement. Other DLT benefits are the efficiency of automation and transparency around the process. And guys, here's a quote, ensuring smooth interoperability between distributed ledger technologies and established financial infrastructures is vital for the seamless shift towards the widespread adoption of DLT platforms in the space. This coming from Steve Patrick, COO at Uber Morgan. Rabobank also has a focus on DLT for money makers. Rabobank has shown interest in the benefits of distributed ledger technology commercial paper for several years now. And even in 2021, they ran a pilot with Commerce Bank, another Ripple partner, and EuroClear. Uh, the following year, it ran another series of trials with uh, with uh, one week 
uh, one week maturity commercial paper with Northern Trust and Euroclear. In both cases, it used its own solution, leveraging R3's Corda Enterprise blockchain solution. So uh, in that particular case, they were using Corda, but uh, you know now running on DLT technology, 2 billion euro of DLT pilots right now occurring through Ripple partner Rabobank. So that's some great news. Wanted to keep moving Mike Manfield, bringing this to our attention, Ripple partner MasterCard and MTN to drive mobile money across 13 African markets. So this just came out from Finextra. MasterCard and MTM drive mobile money across 13 African markets. They've signed a multi-agreement deal that will set in motion a new era of collaboration to connect millions of people and small businesses across Africa with digital tools to transact through secure mobile payments, expanding access to the benefits of the cashless digital economy. The partnership will use MasterCard's cutting-edge technology and capabilities to support MTN's ambition to become Africa's largest fintech platform for both merchants and consumers. So they are really looking to uh, boost the African economy here. This follows MasterCard and MTN's recent agreement for a minority investment uh, into MTN Financial Group, or Group Fintech rather, the digital financial services arm of Africa's largest mobile network operator that concluded this month. With MTN's overall subscriber base at 290 million and 600 million active monthly users through Momo, which is mobile money wallets, the agreement will impact 13 markets in Africa, including Benin, uh, Cameroon, Côte d'Ivoire, Estwatini, Ghana, Liberia, Nigeria, Republic of, Cond uh, Republic of Congo, Republic of Guinea, Rwanda, South Africa, Uganda, and Zambia. And so just uh, more information with regards to this, Mike Manfield does point out here, uh, Africa, this is Africa's largest mobile operators, MTM and Orge Group, has resulted in the launch of a mobile wallet powered by Ripple's interledger protocol, Mowali, which is the name of the mobile wallet, built in such a way that it will be able to interact and function between digital financial service providers, thereby supporting the existing 300 38 million mobile money accounts in Africa. So uh, connected with Ripple's interledger protocol through Moali, that is how they're doing it, or at least that is uh, one of the other partnerships that uh, was not mentioned here. Also, uh, just another MasterCard connection from November of 2018 that uh, Mike points out. With MTN's overall subscriber base of 290 million and 60 million active monthly Momo users, wallets will impact the commerce from these particular countries, the 13 that I mentioned earlier. So uh, another great piece of news here coming out of Africa, leveraging RippleNet. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Another large Ripple partner hitting the scene with another partnership here, guys. This one has to do with ACI Worldwide, one of those uh, larger institutional Ripple partners. They are partnering with Kuvats uh, Solutions to advance real-time payment adoption in the country of Colombia, specifically. So ACI Worldwide, which is a global leader in mission-critical real-time payment software and also a prominent Ripple partner, today announced an extension of its long-standing partnership with Kuvat Solutions, uh, a leading Latin American provider for professional services for the payments industry to advance their adoption of Colombia's new domestic real-time payment ecosystem. So this was originally announced uh, back in December, but guys, uh, they now have an update. Kuvat Solutions has partnered with ACI Worldwide in Latin America for nearly 10 years, supporting the delivery and implementation of ACI Worldwide's payment solutions to strategic clients across the payment ecosystem. The extension of this partnership will offer several benefits uh, to market participants in Colombia. Kuvats's special knowledge of implementing ACI state-of-the-art technology means that participants will benefit from swift and secure implementation of immediate payment solutions. So, uh, you know, again, uh, leveraging a partner here that uh, they have already been partners with for 10 years, but looking to modernize. Of course, uh, you know, this has been a great strategy for Ripple, you know, partner up with those back-end technology service providers like Temenos, Finastra, uh, ACI Worldwide, another big one. And considering these uh, these companies have already had such long-standing relationships with their clients, well, who are they going to trust to implement, uh, you know, the modern solution for whatever it ends up being? For this case, it's instant payments. So, you know, this is kind of a nice roundabout way for Ripple to get implemented to the uh, you know multitude of small banks in the multitude of countries around the world, leveraging partnerships that they've already had for a long time. And even down here, uh, the CEO of Kovats does say, we are proud to have been chosen by ACI Worldwide as a partner in this exciting new phase of Colombia's real-time payments market. Uh, ACI Worldwide currently powers 26 domestic and pan-regional real-time schemes across six continents, including 10 central infrastructures, providing solutions to central banks, participant banks, fintechs, and other PSPs. So uh, ACI Worldwide, a global company, and here they're just uh, expanding their partnership to advance real-time payment adoption in Colombia. So some great news there. Wanted to thank Mr. Mann for posting that. Here's another great piece of news, guys, uh, just kind of expanding on uh, the Brazil partnerships 
that uh, some of you guys may already know about when it comes to Ripple and XRP. So Crypto Hulk bringing this to our attention, and I thought I would uh, kind of synopsize some of these points that he pointed out. So we have Ripple ODL, how they joined uh, Amazon back in November of 2022. Amazon Payment Services is when this came out. Uh, they were wondering at that time if that's going to drive the price of XRP. Of course, it has not. But guys, we have some more updated information. So at this point, Inter & Co, formerly Banco Inter, uh, the owners of leading Brazilian fintech or financial services super app Inter and a client of Ripple's on-demand liquidity services has announced that they have joined Amazon Payment Service Provider or the PSP program. So this is a direct connection to Amazon. The press release uh, from the digital bank stated that the partnership Inter-Brazilian's clients uh, who are sellers with Amazon US will now be able to receive and send cross-border payments directly to Inter accounts. Again, guys, this was back from 2022. Uh, fast forward and we've got some more news here. Ripple Star Catch, former Amazon CFO, has now joined the embattled company. So a Ripple connection here with uh, one of Amazon's CEOs amid ongoing legal disputes with the SEC. Ripple remains unfazed, attracting industry-leading talent. And this was just from uh, from last year, last spring. Jensen brings a wealth of experience from his stints at Amazon, Delta Airlines, NBC, Electronic Arts, and Nielsen, a testament to Ripple's ambition of growing its global presence. So this is when they acquired Warren Jensen from Amazon, again, from last year. But guys, don't forget that RippleNet was already test piloted with Amazon's AWS, okay, directly from Amazon's website over here. This is uh, at a time when they were still testing out XCurrent, XRapid, and XVIA. So Ripple and Amazon have had this long-standing kind of quiet relationship uh, simmering in the background. I don't know how much implementation we've seen thus far, but guys, it sounds as though it is becoming more prominent as the days go on. Again, this partnership goes back all the way back to 2014, so 10 years ago. At this time, Latin America's latest Ripple gateway launches in Brazil, okay? RipEx aims to boost cryptocurrencies in Brazil with the launch of the country's second Ripple gateway. And this was, uh, this was uh, implemented by a guy named Rafael Oleo. The company, which is called RipEx, will service Brazilian residents, giving them a fast and affordable way to buy digital currencies in the country, according to its co-founder. Uh, and RipEx will improve the connection of Brazil and the cryptocurrency environment. Again, guys, this is from 10 years ago. Today, we pay a premium on the price of Bitcoin, for example, because of the Forex needed to send money abroad. So, you know, this has been in the background, simmering in the background for a long time. Uh, just down here, too, as a new customer incentive, the company is giving away up to 2,000 XRP on newly registered and verified accounts who will receive their first 400 XRP upon the first fiat deposit and the remaining incrementally thereafter. Again, from 10 years ago, you know, when they were trying to boost XRP utility, giving it away uh, at a point. So some interesting developments here and, uh, you know, all these connections to uh, one particular country, Brazil, tapping into DLT technology, running on RippleNet, you know, it does seem like uh, they are setting up their infrastructure to be completely compliant once this new financial system goes live globally because it's the interoperability, right? And, uh, you know, to already be integrated because all these economies want to be at the forefront of the technology. Nobody wants to be first, but everybody is clamoring to be second. We heard that from uh, somebody in the blockchain space several years ago now where, you know, the technology, everybody, all these banks, all these bankers, they're like, well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Nobody wants to be left behind. So I feel like at this stage, you know, we, we're seeing this progression through Brazil for the last 10 years. You know, everybody is getting on board. Everybody wants to have the latest technology so that they're not left behind. Uh, in this morning's video, I talked a little bit about Swift being the middleman and how that uh, position in the financial system is becoming obsolete. And, uh, you know, cryptocurrency ledgers like uh, the XRPL and HBAR are going to replace the middleman in this new financial structure. So, you know, the, the countries that have not adopted yet, I think are doing it very, very fast at this point. There is a, a deadline in 2025 uh, for ISO 20022 implementation. And I do think that, uh, you know, at the, the, the banks that are kind of scrambling at the last minute, well, I guess better late than never. Uh, nevertheless, more adoption here in Brazil, and especially just noting this connection too with Amazon and Ripple. So I wanted to thank Crypto Hulk for bringing that to our attention. But guys, did you hear this? Okay, this decode yesterday even blew my mind. From Ripples in Wales here on Twitter, Russia and the chair of the new BRICS strap in. This started when I saw an article by Chad Steingraber. Uh, he posted that uh, through a twist of events, Russia is now chairing the presidency in BRICS in 2024. And it was supposed to be Brazil. So for whatever reason, now Russia is chairing the BRICS 
uh, presidency, okay? This was unplanned as Brazil was set to be the presidency in 2024, but for some reason they switched. Brazil was leading the G20 this year, I believe. So the presidency of the BRICS closely linked to the G20. All BRICS members are also G20 members. India instigated the push on uh, regulations last year in 2023 in August. So listen up, okay? Russia is now the chair of the BRICS in 2024. This was not planned at all. BRICS was set to abandon the usage of SWIFT and the dollar for wholesale trade. This is no small deal. It's widely known, okay? Even Vladimir Putin did mention it in the uh, Tucker Carlson interview, Russia and China. Their trade has exceeded $200 billion. I'm going to play you guys this clip and then we're going to continue if you guys uh, did not catch the Tucker Carlson interview with Vladimir Putin. But he explains this, okay? BRICS trade just increasing over the G7. Listen to this. We, together with my colleague and friend, President Xi Jinping, set a goal to reach $200 billion of mutual trade with China this year. We have exceeded this level. According to our figures, our bilateral trade with China totals already $230 billion, and the Chinese statistics says it is $240 billion. One more important thing, our trade is well balanced, mutually complementary in high-tech, energy, scientific research and development. It is very balanced. As for BRICS, where Russia took over the presidency this year, the BRICS countries are, by and large, developing very rapidly. Look, if memory serves me right, back in 1992, the share of the G7 countries in the world economy amounted to 47%, whereas in 2022, it was down to I think a little over 30%. The BRICS countries accounted for only 16% in 1992, but now their share is greater than that of the G7. It has nothing to do with the events in Ukraine. This is due to the trends of global development and world economy, as I mentioned just now. And this is inevitable. This will keep happening. It is like the rise of the sun. You cannot prevent the sun from rising. You have to adapt to it. How do the United States adapt? With the help of force, sanctions, pressure, bombings, and use of armed forces. This is about self-conceit. Your political establishment does not understand that the world is changing under objective circumstances. And in order to preserve your level, even if someone aspires, pardon me, to the level of dominance, you have to make the right decisions in a competent and timely manner. Such brutal actions, including with regard to Russia and, say, other countries, are counterproductive. This is an obvious fact. It has already become evident. So the trade target exceeded $200 billion between Russia and uh, one of the largest economies in the world, namely China. Uh, it wasn't in this clip, but it was in another clip uh, of the Vladimir Putin two-hour interview where he does talk about how their trade has increased, well, from uh, diminishing the use of uh, U.S. dollars into their own foreign currencies. And uh, Vladimir Putin, at that point, he did talk about Russia, China uh, trading in yuan and rubles. So uh, unfortunately, it was not in this clip, but uh, I do think you guys uh, get the picture here. Trade is becoming larger and, uh, you know, it's difficult. It's becoming more and more difficult for them to put sanctions, the U.S. to put sanctions on Russia and uh, their trading partners. So how is this all connected? Russia's symbol, guys, is the bear. The bear is used in these cryptographic cartoons as main characters. So here it is, the bear being the symbol for Russia and also the bear being the mascot in cryptographic cartoons is the main character and has been for several years. The bear Russia has now sitting in the chair, which backs onto the fireplace made of bricks. That's right. The fireplace made of bricks. The bear sitting in the chair backing into this fireplace, guys, from uh, one of the Christmas riddles from a few years ago. The bear is pointing to a whiteboard with 589 SWIFT, the S being the dollar sign. So are we seeing a shift, guys? SWIFT becoming replaced. The bear uh, at this point in time showing us, uh, almost giving us a lesson of what is going to happen next. Liquidity, the COMEX rule, Nostro, Cobalt. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the video I did on 589 updated, I will link that up here. I did it uh, several months ago now. 
but it uh, it gives you more explanation on uh, what all that meant. 589. 589 is Ripple's grail. The goal that they are seeking to achieve above all else. In part, it means swift. Look at the LS1 where Bearable Guy explains the meaning. And uh, you guys can also go see that meaning in that video that I just posted up there. Incredible metaphors used here. Russia is now chairing BRICS and will switch away from SWIFT in the US dollar in 2024. Guys, I'm also starting to think that this is the case, especially it just solidified it for me when, uh, when, when I heard this interview with Vladimir Putin a couple of weeks ago. The United States government, I don't think they realize how little power they have over these uh, competing economies, in this case, Russia and China being a big threat. Ripples and whales continuing by saying, it's all there, we just understand these metaphors used by clever cryptographers. See my latest video on Rumble, and I do suggest that uh, you guys go follow his Rumble channel. I'm sure it is posted here uh, in his uh, Twitter description, or maybe not, maybe it's not, but uh, I'm sure you guys can find it over there if you message Ripple and whales. But guys, another interesting connection to the bear and Russia, the BRICS nations, the bear now sitting by the brick fireplace, giving us a lesson about how the financial system is going to change using Swift in this example. I don't know. It all seems to connect to me, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, guys. We're so close to 100,000 subscribers. we got to hit 100,000. We got one month to do it, and we are so close. So please subscribe to the channel. If you guys are interested in winning a Ledger Nano S or X, I'm going to be giving two away. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.